Upper goes flying, hitting a woman. Katrina Weber spoke to the woman and how she's describing her unusual morning this noon. A standoff at a home in Leon Valley coming to an end after two hours. This noon, Sarah Costa explains what officers got led, to, why officers got led to the home in the first place. We've got a great week on the way. Some cool mornings. How low will we go tomorrow morning? We'll take a look at the forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, Judson ISD schools have lifted a lockdown that lasted for several hours. It began in the 7400 block of Ben's Engelman, where residents heard gunshots near Henry Metzger Middle School over on the city's northeast side. Stephen Cavazos is live with why an investigation is now underway. Stephen. Well, as you can see right behind me, things have since quieted down here outside Metzger Middle School. But hours earlier, parents and nearby residents were on high alert after gunshots were heard in the area, which led BCSO deputies and Judson ISD police to search for a suspect they originally believed was involved. Now, just take a look right here. It all started around 9 this morning when neighbors had heard those gunshots in the area. And when BCSO deputies arrived, that's when they heard several more shots fired. That's when Metzger Middle School was placed on a full lockdown and nearby schools were placed on perimeter lockdown lockdown shortly after those shots again were fired. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salasad says they were originally searching for a man who was wearing overalls with no shirt, but it is important to note that this area is frequented by nearby dove hunters. It should be noted that there's an area near here where uh, it's frequented by dove hunters. Uh, we did make contact with a dove hunter who did say he did fire several shots, but we don't know at this point if what the initial neighbor heard, then the initial complainant heard, was those gunshots so in an abundance of caution we continued to to check out uh the perimeter around the school now deputies did make contact with a man who was walking in the green belt however salasov says that it is still too early to determine if he was involved in that shooting and no weapon has been found now we do want to mention that the lockdowns here at the schools have thankfully since been lifted salasov says that parents and nearby residents can expect a heavier bcso presence but it is also important to note that there is no immediate threat they believed is current at this time for now reporting live stephen cavasso's ksat 12 news back to you guys thank you stephen the images of a morning car crash on the city's south side, jaw-dropping. But the end result is head-scratching. San Antonio police say a driver somehow survived that crash, which left his car wrapped around a utility pole. It happened just before rush hour at the corner of Southeast Military in South Flores. And as Katrina Weber reports, flying debris from the crash also created a close call for a pedestrian. One look at this wreck instantly makes you believe the outcome couldn't be good especially for anyone in the passenger seat. San Antonio police say fortunately no one was there. The driver who's in his 20s was alone and still alive and awake when rescuers got to him. I was right in the corner just about to cross the street when I saw that car like, you know, going crazy. Bertha de Los Santos saw that trouble coming before 7 this morning as she stepped off a bus at the corner of Southeast Military and South Flores. The car, which she says was out of control, slammed into a utility pole, sending debris flying across the intersection. Everything in pieces, the front bumper, everything in pieces came out in. The other one slid out to where I was at. The car bumper landed not just at her feet, but on one, leaving her limping. Firefighters, meanwhile, had to cut the roof off the car to free the driver. He was rushed to a hospital, yet police say he should survive. While police are still investigating exactly what went wrong behind the wheel, they say based on what they see here, the amount of damage the driver had to be speeding. It happened just like, like nowhere, like nothing nowhere. It just happened quickly. What's most surprising, De Los Santos says, is that no one was killed. Police say with just a few inches difference in where both she and the driver were hit, there could have been a different ending to the story. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Neighbors in Leon Valley woke up to the sound of gunshots this morning. Those bullets leading to a standoff with police near Bandera and Hebner Roads for about two hours. Sarah Costa spoke with Leon Valley Police about how this one ended. 
anywhere from 8 to 28 shots fired from a home in a Leon Valley neighborhood. That's what Leon Valley Police Chief David Gonzalez said neighbors told investigators that led to a standoff with police for over two hours. Just before 8 a.m., Chief Gonzalez says officers were in the area of the 7000 block of Weathered Post Street. That's near Hebner and Bandera when officers heard those gunshots. Shortly after that, when they arrived to the home, Gonzalez says three men barricaded themselves inside. The chief says a county negotiator arrived on scene and just after 10 a.m., three men surrendered and were taken into custody. We spoke with neighbors about what they heard. I heard somebody unload a whole clip of gunshots. It sounded like a fully automatic handheld weapon. There was cops lined up right all, all over the street and they had their rifles out and they were looking that way, which we couldn't really see because there's a lot of trees, but apparently the neighbors were all talking to each other and saying that there was somebody on on his knees. Chief Gonzalez says they are currently interviewing those suspects. He says so far they told him they were having a party at the house. One of them is intoxicated. At this time, charges are still pending and they have not released the identities of those suspects in custody. However, the chief says they did recover an assault type rifle from inside the home, along with multiple shell casings. From Leon Valley, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. A San Antonio man will spend 15 months in federal prison after he was convicted of spreading a hoax related to COVID-19 back in April of last year. A federal jury found 40-year-old Christopher Charles Perez guilty. Evidence presented during the trial revealed that Perez posted two threatening messages on Facebook. He claimed that he paid someone who was infected with COVID to lick items at the grocery stores in the San Antonio area. He wanted to scare people away from visiting the stores. After investigating, the FBI says the threat was false. Perez also admitted the information in the post not true. In addition to sentence, Perez will have to pay a $1,000 fine. The results of the latest Bear Facts case at San Antonio report poll were released today. The poll engaged the opinions of 602 Bear County voters. The results showed growing disapproval for Governor Greg Abbott, but high approval for local leaders like San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. The polls include questions about local issues ranging from water and transportation to affordable housing and education, as well as voter confidence in local and state officials. You can read more about the results on KSAT.com. Now to the race for Congress to prevent the U.S. from defaulting on its debt and President Biden warning of dire consequences if the debt limit isn't raised. ABC's Ike Jachi reports lawmakers are hoping to reach an agreement by the end of the week. In under two weeks, the U.S. will run out of money to pay the bills it owes unless Congress raises the debt ceiling. The United States is a nation that pays its bills and always has. Financial experts say the consequences will be dire for the country if Congress doesn't. A recent study by Moody's says a default would be a cataclysmic economic scenario and could cost the U.S. economy up to 6 million jobs, wipe out as much as $15 trillion in household wealth, $20 billion owed to seniors on Social Security could go unpaid, and the unemployment could soar to around 9%, well above the current rate of 5 Congress has until October 18th to raise the debt ceiling, which has traditionally been done on a bipartisan basis. But Republicans are refusing to help, accusing the White House of wanting to add trillions in new domestic spending. Democrats need to tackle the debt limit. We gave them a roadmap and three months notice. Democrats labeling the GOP hypocritical. 98% of the current debt was accrued before Biden took office, including $7.8 trillion added during former President Trump's time in office, resulting in Republicans raising the debt limit multiple times. If Republicans want to vote to stop payments from going to Social Security recipients or veterans, then be my guest. When a reporter asked if he could guarantee the U.S. won't default on its debts, no, Biden gave no assurances. That's up to Mitch McConnell. Now, Schumer told his Senate colleagues they don't have the luxury of waiting until October 18th to raise the debt limit, adding that a bill to raise the debt ceiling must be on the president's desk by the end of the week. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Still caught up this half hour. The Spurs opened up the preseason with a nice win last night. The young guns tuning out the jazz. Highlights coming up. Instead of hitting the gym, one, uh, the, you might want to go in the great outdoors. Why those involved in the program say the outdoor class is helping participants focus on their fitness goals. 
An international day of the girl next week, but activities are already planned for the days leading up to it. We've got the details coming up after the break. In honor of Hispa Hispanic Heritage Month, we want to talk about identity and culture. Many times, language is reflective of culture, which is constantly changing due to societal norms. It affects how people identify. Alicia Barrera has more on the difference between Hispanic, Latino, Latina, and Latinx. Yeah, well, this is a term that's fairly new and has definitely gained a lot of popularity, especially among younger generations. But the term also does cause a lot of pushback. But Dr. Lori Rodriguez from Palo Alto College says it's really because of a lot of misconceptions. Dr. Lori Rodriguez, Associate Professor of Humanities and the coordinator for the Mexican American Studies program at Palo Alto College, explains Latinx is a term rooted in the Spanish term Latino Americanos, which refers to people who are descended from Latin American countries. According to Rodriguez, a popular misconception is that the term defines a person's sexual orientation. However, that's not true. So what is the X about? So it removes the, the masculine O and the feminine A, and it just removes any kind of gender identifier. Also, we have younger people that are understanding and identifying more with this gender non-binary identity, or at least learning how to be respectful of it. Dr. Rodriguez says it's important to do some research of your own to learn more about these terms and not just conform to what box has to be checked on forms. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. It is a day designated to promote girls' rights and to bring awareness to the challenges they face. It's the International Day of the Girl, and it's coming up on October 11th. Just this morning, local nonprofits came together to announce activities planned during this year's celebration. San Antonio's girl-focused nonprofits are hoping to come together to build awareness and support. But what does the day mean to some of the girls involved in bringing the event to life in our community? To me, it means bringing girls together all around San Antonio um, just to let them know that they are leaders in their own types of ways and that they need to believe in themselves to be whatever they decide they want to be. Now, one of the first events is happening this Sunday morning at 11. There's going to be games, information booths, and more, all happening at Hemisphere Park. The free event celebrates and educates all things advancing girls. Looking outside with live cam, another one of those days, no sweat, nice and dry, real pretty. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I get to take credit again, right? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is beautiful. We started off really nice in the 50s and 60s. Now we're starting to warm up. Of course, with the air being as dry as it is, you're gonna see those big swings in temperature, and we will get up into the 90s this afternoon in several spots. The aquifer has turned a corner now. It's going down 4 tenths per foot, 659.9 in your pollen count. And not looking so great. Molds are in the high category, 1,740. Fall elm and ragweed, both moderate. Grass is low. We're losing daylight. We're going to talk about how our days are shortening. Coming up. So what's a scientific term for losing daylight? Is there one? No, I think that's it. <laughs> I didn't mean to stump you. <laughs> he thought I, it was a country song. I thought, I thought, well, it, song it is a good title daylight. for a country song. I mean, that works out well. <laughs> I think you should write that, David. Oh, yeah. Come up with something. Uh, we are losing daylight. We're losing it quickly as we get into our transition months here as we head towards winter. In the month of October, as you look across the country, you lose 90 minutes of daylight up across the northern tier of states, and it sort of falls off as you go south. So the northern latitudes, the higher latitudes there, you, you lose a lot more daylight. But here in San Antonio, we're going to lose about 40 minutes of daylight over the course of the month of October. And uh, as I mentioned, we lose daylight more quickly as we transition from summer to winter. So on October 1st, our sunrise was at 727. The sunset was at 719. By the time we get to October 31st, the sunrise is 746, sunset at 648. It feels a little more like fall, and these mornings help when you have temperatures down in the 50s in a lot of spots. 54 at Carville, 54 at Bernie State, 61 Pleasanton, 57 at Hondo. 
and we got down to 66 in Del Rio, 64 Rack Springs, Gonzales, a very comfortable 58. We'll do that again tomorrow morning, by the way. So if you missed the uh, cool temperatures today, we'll, we'll get to do it again next couple days. Lots of blue skies out there. Temperatures have made it up to 85 now. Dew point is at 49, and that makes it feel so much better. Satellite picture shows we have very little cloud cover. Actually, no cloud cover here over Bear County. 79 burning stage now. It's up to 87 at Hondo. So you can see how quickly these numbers warmed up. There is some cloud covers to get up towards Junction, Rack Springs, and Fredericksburg. Not much, though, and we're not expecting a whole lot uh, over the course of today. Dew points, 40s today, and then they'll slowly rise, although I don't think you'll really notice it until Sunday when dew points start to really jump up into the 60s, and we start to get a little more cloud cover, and then maybe, maybe some showers by Monday. Here's the reason things are so dry. You see this twist in the atmosphere right here. That's your low. On the back side of it, you have northerly flows. That's keeping things very dry. This orange color here shows we have dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and that just that keeps clouds pretty much out of the picture. As we look at the setup here on the east side of the low, you're getting a ton of rain, and there are flash flood watches and warnings. They're going to get uh, some pretty heavy rainfall, I'm afraid, Atlanta down towards the uh, Florida Panhandle here, flash flood watches, as I mentioned, in place. So as we look at the future cast here, we stay on the dry side of this area of low pressure, and then high pressure builds in. That still keeps us dry. And on Saturday, that high pressure will be right over top of us. Uh, so I think we could get some pretty warm temperatures this weekend, probably a low 90s in the forecast. Beyond that, a little disturbance works through, and by Monday morning, we'll be on the tail end of things, but we could get a couple of showers on Monday. It doesn't look like it'll be anything too significant or heavy, but uh, at least a little bit of rain in the forecast. Forecast for the rest of today takes us up to 90. Sunny skies, northerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and then temperatures will drop off quickly this evening into the 60s by midnight and eventually close to uh, the 50s by tomorrow morning. Right now we're going 60, 89 Wednesday, 90 on Thursday, 90 on Friday. Humidity does return on Sunday, and notice the temperatures over the weekend, 92, 93, and it's getting a little summer like for you. Uh, then 20% chance of rain on Monday, guys. All right, we need the rain. Can't complain. Remember when we used to say with all the veterans as far as that, hey, some of the young guns stepped up? Well, we don't say that anymore because now they're all young guns and they stepped up in the first preseason game. Highlights coming up. First kick off the preseason last night. Doesn't like having an Olympic gold medalist on your starting lineup. Keldon Johnson and the Spurs hosting the Utah Jazz. Jaka Pertle is going to get things started. First with the floater. That tied it at two, but Utah controls the pace early. Kick out to San Antonio native Jordan Clarkson for the three. Jazz up 11 7. Derek White ties the game with this driving layup. And then a few minutes later, it's Drew Eubanks hitting the triple. 24 18. Spurs up after one. Second quarter offense stays hot. First, it's Bryn Forbes knocking down the three ball. That's why he's back in San Antonio. 33-25 San Antonio. Then Keldon Johnson banks the jumper in. Counted plus the foul. 11-point lead. Spurs win their preseason opener. What 11 to 85. DeJounte Murray and rookie Joshua Primo with 17 each. Let's hear from the guys. What I was interested mostly was to see what kind of carryover we'd have from the practices. And I was, I was pleased with that. I thought, you know, a lot of guys uh, tried to do what we've talked about at both ends of the court. So that was good. Uh, their, their effort, their uh, aggressiveness lasted for the whole 48. Overall, I think it was a good outing. Nothing better than a pleased pop. All right, so the Spurs preseason continues with a little bit of practice at Wednesday. They are in Detroit to take on the Pistons at Little Caesars Arena at 6 p.m. You think they got some pizza there at Little Caesars Arena? I think they're, they sell it there. Sell them pizza or two. All right, a fitness, fitness class right here in the Alamo City aiming to help people get stronger. Why the instructor says it doesn't mean include, it doesn't have to include heavy weights in your workout. It's coming up in our next half hour. And federal health officials are changing their messaging when it comes to the holidays. The latest advice on celebrations amid the pandemic. We use them to clean our clothes and dishes, but how often do you clean your household appliances? It's an important step you might be skipping, and it can lead to a buildup of bacteria and bad odors. Coming up today at 5, 12 your side has some tips on how to keep your appliances squeaky clean and stink free.
The CDC says it will release updated guidance soon when it comes to celebrating the holidays. This comes after the CDC posted and then removed holiday guidance from its website over the weekend. The CDC website previously suggested virtual holiday celebrations or parties outdoors. And the site told families to avoid sit down dinners and instead opt for drop off meals. However, the agency now says its page was experiencing, quote, technical difficulties. The CDC has since removed that advice from this website. The nation's top infectious disease doctor is changing his tune as well. Over the weekend, he said it was too soon to tell if it's safe for Americans to get together for the holidays. And now I encourage people, particularly the vaccinated people who are protected to have a good, normal Christmas with your family. Meanwhile, there is a new study about the effectiveness of the vaccines over time. The report says that after six months, the Pfizer vaccine loses about half of its effectiveness, but is still more than 90% effective in preventing hospitalizations. Meantime, Johnson & Johnson is asking the Food and Drug Administration to approve its COVID-19 booster shot. J&J &J hasn't asked for a specific time interval to administer the booster, but instead the company submitted some data and it shows a second shot boosts immunity to 94% when given two months after the first dose and boosts immunity response 12 fold when given it six months. J&J &J says that the protection from its vaccine remains stable over time. The FDA already approved Pfizer's booster, but only for specific groups like people age 65 and older and immunosuppressed. The agency will consider whether to approve boosters from J&J &J and Moderna at the end of next week. AstraZeneca has filed for an emergency use authorization in the U.S. for its COVID-19 antibody therapy. The company says it prevents symptomatic COVID-19, particularly among those who don't get an immune response from vaccination. Based on its trials, the drug reduced the risk of symptoms by 77 percent. More data on the treatment is expected later this year, and if granted by the Food and Drug Administration, it would be the first long-acting antibody combination to receive emergency youth authorization. AstraZeneca says it is still discussing supply agreements with the U.S. and governments around the world. All right, revelations about Facebook now rolling out in public before Congress. The social media app, one that probably you use every day, being revealed is putting profits in front of your family's health and well-being. Inside information being revealed by a former employee, ABC's Rita Roy, on those claims that Facebook is aware that anger, outrage, and misinformation posted on its pages draws in more users. All eyes on the Facebook whistleblower Tuesday. I used to work at Facebook. Former product manager Frances Haugen blasting the social media giant in her testimony before However, Congress. The choices being made inside of Facebook are disastrous for our children, for our public safety, for our privacy, and for our democracy. And that is why we must demand Facebook make changes. Haugen claims the company put profits before public good, purposely sowing division to keep users engaged. They want you to believe that this is just part of the deal. I am here today to tell you that's not true. These problems are solvable. I came forward at great personal risk because I believe we still have time to act. But we must act now. This as Facebook officials deal with the fallout of the nearly six hour blackout on the site and its sister pages, Instagram and WhatsApp Monday, creating widespread frenzy across the globe. Roughly 3.5 billion users unable to access their accounts. To have every service that they operate be inaccessible uh, for this amount of time is uh, this is a catastrophic outage. Employees told ABC News the company's internal email was also down. Facebook saying we believe the root cause of this outage was a faulty configuration change. We also have no evidence that user data was compromised as a result of this downtime. We apologize to all those affected. Outages for companies like these do not happen uh, that often and certainly not for this duration. And back to that whistleblower, Facebook has released a statement in response to her allegations, saying in part to suggest we encourage bad content and do nothing is just not true, adding that they're making significant improvements to tackle the spread of misinformation. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Outside with live cameras, beautiful day. All right, that 
pretty much wrapped it up right there. Didn't did everybody go outside and get some exercise in the nice, cool morning air? Just no. Not no, yet. you walked to your car again. <laughs> not enough. How about you, Justin? Mm, I didn't do any exercise this morning, but maybe this evening. Maybe this evening. Did you? Be? Yeah. Okay. She got it in. She got it in. Then. Early, right? Early. Real because... early. The dew was quite thick. <laughs> well, once the sun comes up, those temperatures uh, come up pretty quickly. We're already in the mid 80s now. We do want to check in on the aquifer. We're right there at 660, which obviously is the cutoff for restrictions, but we are still in restrictions. You got to get that 10 day average up over 660 and it's just not there. And with a dry forecast ahead, we would expect that the aquifer would stay below that number. We're not in horrible shape, but uh, we would like to see the, the aquifer jump up a little bit more. We typically do see some good rainfall in the fall. We've had a couple of bouts of showers and storms, but uh, nothing this week. 85 right now, Comfort 86 in New Braunfels, 83, Uvalde 89, Pleasanton. We've got clear skies for most everybody other than maybe a few clouds up there in the hill country. Should be a really nice day. 90 by 5 o'clock, sunny skies, 86, 7 o'clock. By 10 o'clock, we're at 70 with clear conditions. There will be a northerly breeze, 5 to 15 miles per hour. But that just keeps driving in that dry air. And by tomorrow morning, we should be back in the upper 50s and low 60s to start your Wednesday. Guys. Thanks, Justin. Now to that massive oil spill off Southern California. We're learning officials were aware of it hours before the energy company reported it as investigators target a possible cause for the rupture in the underwater pipeline. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest on this environmental disaster. Overnight, the governor of California declaring a state of emergency to try to expedite and throw more funds at the cleanup like what you're seeing behind me. That as we are learning of this 12 hour time gap between the first apparent report of an oil spill right off the coast here and the time at around 9 a.m. Saturday morning that the oil company Amplify Energy told authorities that it might have a pressure issue and shut down its pipeline. Now authorities say that we are likely to see a criminal investigation against the company. Uh, that as we learn that it is possible, and the company says likely, that a ship's anchor passing above hit that pipeline. That's what caused the rupture. Also worth noting that this company, Amplify, has been hit with dozens of non-compliance violations over the decades it's been in business by federal regulators. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Huntington Beach, California. Russia making history with its latest space mission, but the crew on board isn't just scientists, they are actors. Details later in the show. And a local fitness class thinking outside the box and outside the gym. How it uses nature as the backdrop to help people build up their strength. When the pandemic hits, fitness gurus forced to find a new way to work out, and many took to the outdoors, like the local greenways and even their own backyard. In today's New You, we head out to one San Antonio spot that has the perfect backdrop to break a sweat. Nice job! This is your cardio vascular endurance. Come on, come on! You need to find fitness that works for you. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, you're not going to stick with it, right? Although she's a fitness enthusiast herself, Laura Riefenrath is the first to admit the gym isn't for everyone. And that's why she's taken her class with Tribe Fitness Outdoors to the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. A lot of people think that you really just need big heavy weights and you need to go really heavy with, with those weights in order to get a good um, strength training, right? And that is not necessarily the case at all. We're here to show you um, things you can do with just your body, things you can do with a simple resistance band to really see improvements um, and, and gain muscular strength. She is one half of the coaching staff behind Trek and Tone, one of a handful of fitness classes offered at the gardens. No two classes are the same. The entirety of the garden's 38 acres is utilized. So each week there's a different location for our classes. With Trek and Tone, you're sure to explore nature. Each class has a unique running or walking route to complete three times 
with some strength and training exercises in between. We bring resistance bands for everyone, and we typically break it down so that you have an upper body move, a lower body move, and a core strength move. It's, it's something new and kind of confuse your muscles a little bit and keep them, keep them on their toes. And just being able to always see something differently as you're going through, just like we're inside one of our conservatories, it's absolutely beautiful. So it kind of pushes you to keep going. Since the start of the pandemic, and as the Texas weather gets a little bit cooler, more and more people are embracing the outdoors. And while this is the perfect environment for social distancing, you can still rely on your fellow participants for that extra push. We do it for the Woo! You still have the group fitness class um, aspect where you, you get to create that sense of community. A lot of people don't feel judged here. It's a very welcoming area. They're able to focus on themselves and just really connect. Trek and Tone happens every Saturday. The Botanical Gardens also offers morning and evening yoga. Classes are $15 and includes admission to the gardens for the day. You can find a link to register on our website, ksat.com. So if you do head outside early in the morning this week and to go work out, you will see a lot of dew on the ground in some places. Yes, if that temperature does get down to the dew point, which sounds like that happened this morning where you were, you, you are going to get a little bit of dew on the grass. Uh, it goes away pretty quickly, though, because uh, the air then dries out in, in the afternoon. And you see these big swings in temperature. We started off at 61 this morning, 85 so far today, though. So you know we're going to be above average for a high. The record is 95, set back in way back in 1893. Some hot temperatures, even as we get into the weekend. We'll look ahead to the weekend coming up. Hey everyone, welcome back to Whatever the Weather. Hi, let's talk about hurricanes. That's good. That's the sound of hurricane. That's good. And I had to stop myself from like really going off the deep end with this here past Question. couple weeks. Yes, Sarah. Why is Atlantic hurricane season at the time it is? It's the warm water. Yes, well, yes. yeah, that's another Sarah way. Sarah Spivey scale. You know what? Oh, hey, yep. I like that. Hurricanes in the northern hemisphere spin counterclockwise, while hurricanes in the southern hemisphere spin clockwise. And this is because of something called the Coriolis effect. All right. And no, that does not <laughs> impact the way the toilet <laughs> flushes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Everybody who's listening to this podcast has a memory of a particular hurricane. I remember helping my parents board up our house, and Whoa. it was um, it was pretty gnarly. We were covering Harvey. Yeah, I remember you, you and Mike Osterhage, one of our colleagues, were going wall to wall. <laughs> That's our GoPro. My GoPro went out. <laughs> no hurricanes to report today. We had our share of them this year, though. That's yeah, for sure. It's a great podcast, by the way, if you guys want to give it a lesson. Learn a lot. The meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Katie Blake. You Good stuff. You get a bigger battery for that GoPro, though. <laughs> yeah, they, they got to get that oh. fixed. And that's they were right about the toilet stuff. That's, you know, that's always a question we get. I can't I, believe no. that. Cool. Yeah, they, they don't flush the other way in Southern Hemisphere. Thank you. It's local effects. We won't get into all that, though. I'll let them take care of that. Hey, uh, let's talk pollen. Uh, where are we? Fall elm, ragweed. Still the issues that uh, usually pop up this time of year. We are in fall allergen season. Mold's the, actually the big issue today, but you're going to see fall elm and ragweed continue to be issues uh, next couple of months. I mean, fall elm does typically come down late October. Ragweed sticks around until we see that first big freeze. So uh, we often see it into November. Outside right now, we've got clear skies and a beautiful day underway. 85 at the airport, 89 stints and 86. Kelly, 85 at Randolph. Not a lot of wind out there. And uh, looking at the uh, satellite picture, no clouds either. And so temperatures are jumping up. 88 Castroville, 87 Hondo, 81 right now Bernie Stage, 82 for our friends out in Seguin with clear skies there. 89 Kennedy, 86 Gonzales. There is a little bit of cloud cover trying to work in from the north. And that is going to be one of the big questions tonight is whether or not we have clouds around. If we do have a little bit of cloud cover, that'll keep temperatures up some. If we can keep things clear and those clouds stay just to the north of San Antonio. We'll see temperatures drop off a little bit more tonight. So that's something we'll be watching. Regardless, it, uh, it is going to be nice tomorrow morning. We showed you some of the numbers around the area, 89 in Catula. And the, the dew points are down some. We're seeing dew points in the 40s and 
50s here, so it's uh, it's fairly dry air. It's not bone dry, but it's dry enough to where you don't uh, you don't feel it. And this dry air sticks with us for a couple of days. We're on the back side of this low pressure system, so that's driving in the drier air from the north. Out ahead of it, we're seeing quite a bit of rain, some uh, good heavy rain in some cases, uh, parts of Alabama, at uh, Atlanta, Georgia, over towards uh, the, the Panhandle, Florida. And th they're going to continue to see that as that low just sits there. Flash flood watch is in effect. That's where really all the active weather is. There's some rain across the desert southwest as well. But as you look across the country, nothing really jumps off the page here. We're not seeing any big surge of cold air, no big cold front. This is pretty typical fall weather. It's warm down in Florida here in Texas, and then you got pretty comfortable weather across the West 75 right now in Salt Lake City 71 Denver 66 up there in Chicago. So uh, nothing that, that's uh, too terrible out there across the country right now. We'll be up around 90 degrees today and then temperatures fall off to near 80 8 o'clock 70 by 10 o'clock and 66 by midnight. The extended forecast so we're going to go 89 Wednesday 90 on Thursday 90 on Friday 92 Saturday humidity does return Sunday. And so that results in a little bit more cloud cover and then uh, perhaps a few uh, showers and storms pop up as uh, we get into early next week. Another little storm system comes through, but this is a very quiet weather pattern. And uh, you know what? I think I ended a little bit early. Producers still tell me we got like 30 seconds left. OK, let's talk about <laughs> how we got to fill maybe, some time here. you know, it, during other weeks when we've had a very active weather um, pattern. We have talked about how you needed a raise when you have a week like this mm -hmm. pay cut wow <laughs> did not see that coming wow well uh, we have 30 listen, seconds um, to kill so let's let's vote average, that down it averages out right yeah let's vote that down because <laughs> you didn't get the I'm raise not, okay that's true yeah no let's th th there will be some active weather coming along just not this week okay well, we'll take a break we'll enjoy the, the we're quiet okay with weather. that yeah oh good <laughs> a couple of Russian actors are taking on an out-of-this-world project. They're going to space. How they prepared after landing history, making roll. Dave Chappelle has a new comedy special. It's on Netflix. Dave Chappelle, The Closer, premieres today. Netflix and Chappelle patched up their rocky relationship earlier this year when the two sides agreed to a new streaming agreement for Chappelle's show. Today, some actors weren't walking the red carpet. Instead, they were on their way to a spacecraft. Yeah, that's because today, Russia launched a film crew into outer space. The crew includes actors who are going to make a film. As CNN's Julia Chatterley explains, the U.S. also has similar plans. It's the final frontier of filmmaking and a first for one lucky star who will feature in the first movie made in the stars. It seems like a role custom made for actor Tom Cruise, known for his gravity-defying stunts like hanging off the side of a plane or scaling the world's tallest building. Last year, NASA said it was planning to make a movie with Cruise on the International Space Station. But the winner of this space race is Moscow over Hollywood. Russian actress Yulia Peresild lifts off Tuesday in a Soyuz spacecraft to travel to the International Space Station in what could be one of the most unusual commutes ever to a movie set. I'm not afraid of anything. I just really want us to make a good movie. And I really want our health, which as it turns out to be generally good, to not let us down. The lead actress will be accompanied into space by her director. Both had to learn not only their screen parts, but work with professional cosmonauts for months, undergoing weightlessness training with a backup crew, as well as centrifuge tests and parachute drills. During this time, they really tortured us. They didn't beat us up, though, but made us memorize a lot of unknown abbreviations and squeezed us completely. The two will spend 12 days filming on the space station. Cosmonauts on the ISS will also appear in the movie, which is currently titled The Challenge. And that is what the actress says she expects the experience to be, as she and her colleague will have to play multiple roles. Since he will have to be a camera operator, director, and a lighting engineer, I will have to be a makeup artist, costume designer, and an actress. 
Fans will have to judge if the film becomes an international blockbuster, but its out-of-this-world location already makes it a groundbreaking movie. That is a super idea. Do they get space pay for that? I don't know. It's got to be, gotta be a little bit more than normal. The normal. Halloween DIY continues on SA Live, and Fiona is cooking up something spooky. Oh, this is cool. Something I, spooky. I think there's a cauldron Something magical. Involved. You yeah. are correct. Yes, you can impress your friends and your neighborhood this Halloween season by creating your very own bubbling cauldron with embers. We are going to show you how to make that today. Look at that. Look what? at how cool that thing looks. Yes, and, and we're going to show some, you know, little extra touches you can do to kind of take it and up you a notch. That. Yes, I did. <laughs> and it's right out there. It is really, really impressive. So we want to see, speaking of impressive, some of your Halloween decorations. Send them to us and hopefully we can uh, get some good ideas. It's always great to get good ideas from other people too and yeah. kind of steal them a little bit. Yes. So, so from witches brew to how about some beer brews? It is October <laughs> and that means Oktoberfest. It is time. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Alamo Beer Company is here and Greg Spickler is the brew master and you've got Oktoberfest coming up, we right? Do. Yes, sir. October Fest coming right around the corner, October 21st through 24th. All right. And just a couple of weeks away, we are going to be tasting some of the delicious food that they are going to be serving. Prost. Prost. Yes. yes. All right. And of course, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, and we are checking out some of the really great, unique stuff you can find at Felice Modern. Yep, for Hispanic Heritage Month, and also some little goodies for Day of the Dead as well, because that is just around the corner. I say, you get into October, mm -hmm. and then it's all, you know, it's the Halloween. This is and it. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. This is it. This is the train the to the end of the year, Mike. And <laughs> this beer is really tasty, so. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.